Half-life is one of those concepts that students find really difficult to understand. So we're going to look at a very simple experiment here to see if we can make it nice and simple. Let's have a go. Half-life. Yeah, it's got a difficult definition. It's the time taken for half the amount of a substance to disintegrate, change to another substance. Well, we're going to do a very simple simulation here. I've got some coins. They've got yellow on one side and red on the other. And I've got a load of them. What I'm going to do is put them in there. Frighten everyone with a good shake and then pour them out. So these are my random disintegrations. We'll say here that the yellow ones have stayed the same. So what we're going to do is count up some of these. So let's take out four, six, eight, ten, and we'll put some piles of these up, counting up the number of yellows and the number of oranges. So there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we'll put these into little piles so we can count up how many of these have turned from yellow to orange and we'll record them right I'll do that now and you come back when I've finished welcome back it took me a few minutes to try and count this up but the yellow ones are now 50, 100, 124. I'll record that. And the reds, 50, 100, 10, 17. So 117. If life was proper, normal, I'd expect to have exactly the same number of each but this is random so it doesn't happen quite like that so now what we do is we put these coins in it doesn't really matter which set so we'll pretend that these are the ones that didn't disintegrate and as I throw them in They will mix up and we've got all of these coins in here now ready to simulate whether they're going to disintegrate or not. We'll put them on, give them a noisy shake. And then we'll tip them out again. Now what we need to do is to count these again to find out how many have stayed orange and how many have turned yellow. So let's count up how many of these there are and we'll see what the numbers are. Let's have a go. Right, that was quick. So we managed 50, 1, 2, 3, 53 yellow. And we managed 50, 64 red. So let's take the 64 red and we will put these back in here and we'll give them a good mix up 
and then we'll give them a loud shake. And pour them out. And again, we need to count up the number of yellows and the number of reds. It's getting easier this time because there are less. So if I count them up in tens, then I've got to I can get crafty about trying to do this and knowing the number I've got only count up one lot but we'll do it both ways to make it easier four six eight nine ten so there we've got 30 yellow and we should have 34 of these, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10, and there we are, as I predicted, 34, it's not exactly difficult maths to do, red ones. Let's repeat the experiment yet again, putting in all the reds. And I want to make sure that each time I've got a fairly good mix of colours. If I have them all one way up, it doesn't work as well. Do the noisy shake. And this time we seem to have a lot more yellows than reds. That's just pure randomness. Two, four, six, eight. 10, 21, and we're left with 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 13 of these. Now that seems quite a, a difference. They should be equal. But then this is random so this is how it works it works differently every time i do it and this time we've got four six seven yellow and even two four six red Let's repeat it again. I'll make sure that I've got <coughs> a similar number of each. Both ways up. Tip them out. And now we have two yellow and four red. As we're getting lower numbers so this becomes more difficult to sort of predict sometimes they can all go one way and others they can take ages not to do anything and there we have four yellows and zero of the others so there's our results and what we can do now is we can draw a graph of this data as we see from the graph what we've got is a half-life curve an exponential decay 
going down from lots to fewer to fewer to fewer making this classic curve shape so half-life we can repeat this experiment over and over again and each time that we repeat this experiment we will get different numbers but we will get the same shape curve which is the half-life curve the time taken for half the counters or atoms or anything to change from one thing to another.